So yeah, um, I'm Tom Sadler. Uh, I'm a principal software engineer working at the BBC on iPlayer and Sound, which is the BBC's uh, video and audio streaming services. Uh, and I'm currently the secretary and one of the directors on the Innersource Commons board. So I work primarily with the teams that build iPlayer and Sounds for connected TV devices. So smart TVs, set up boxes, games consoles, and I'm focusing on open source and inner source in this space. So you might think of the BBC as a content producer, public service broadcaster, or a news organization, but we're very much a tech company and we have been since we were founded way back in 1922. Uh, we have a thriving R&D department uh, that work on both broadcast and IP industry standards and have done since the beginning of broadcast. Uh, and a lot of what we do is developed in-house like iPlayer and Sounds. Uh, so if you want to learn more about what's going on in uh, BBC software, we have an open source website showing some of our uh, open source offerings. Uh, and we're also running some tech meetups. Um, so we've not run these for a while. We're trying to reboot them. Uh, our first reboot in the new year is going to be on TV app development. So, you know, where uh, the area that I work in. Uh, so do reach out if you work in TV development, um, TV application development uh, and are interested. Uh, and then hopefully we'll be running these regularly. So, yeah, so talking about ownership today and ownership in the context of software development is it's not very well defined. It's not very well understood. Uh, and actually, uh, Claire Dillon, who's you know one of the summit organizers, one of our wonderful members, um, she's actually doing a PhD in this because it is such an unknown area in, in software development. You know, we're not talking about property or intellectual property ownership. It's the kind of ownership of the work, ownership of doing you know, building the software, maintaining the software. And um, what Claire's found is that ownership is generally seen as a good thing because it's about caring about your work and being emotionally invested in it. However, when we talk about ownership in, in the inner source commons, often we're talking uh, on the negative side of things where um, people hang on to their code too tightly and they don't let people in. They don't want contributions. They don't want other people interfering with their code. We kind of talk about that as toxic ownership, um, which um, a lot of people have seen in their inner source journey, unfortunately. Um, we at the BBC have found actually ownership can be quite an enabler, um, but given what I've heard from other people, um, you know, it's you need to be careful that you don't fall into that own, that toxic ownership uh, way of working. Um, and this, this talk isn't about organizational culture or corporate culture, um, but I thought it was worth mentioning that one of the one of the BBC's key values is that we collaborate, learn, and grow together. So I think I'm I think me and my colleagues are quite lucky to work in this sort of environment where actually ownership can be non-toxic because at our core value we have collaboration and that's a huge enabler for open source and of course other types of collaboration so coming back to the tv applications um we have five cross-discipline agile teams working on tv apps um, and the ownership groups are around the product area and also specialisms um, so we have uh, we have kind of our three um, three kind of product feature areas that we split the ownership um, with account, browse, and playback UI. Um, so they are responsible, they're the owners of those product features within the TV apps. Um, because our account is a little bit smaller product-wise than the other areas, um, account also look after the app core, as we call it. Uh, and app core is a really interesting one because it's the, the frameworks, the integrations, and the glue code. This is all the stuff that all five teams rely on to build the product features. So this is very much shared code, uh, ripe for inner source, but also ripe for some bad ownership models because if browse or playback uh, need to work in app core, you know, they don't want to be throwing it over the wall at the account team. They should be you know, making inner source contributions and doing that themselves. So that's an interesting one that we'll visit a couple of times in the talk. 
And then the final two teams are more platform oriented. So we have a, a media playback specialization team separate from the playback UI um, because media playback on TVs is quite a specialized area. And then build and launch infrastructure. So um, like we have 11 million weekly users on average. So being able to access iPlayer through our front door, through our infrastructure is really important. So we have a whole team specialized on that. And they also look after the build and kind of developer experience side of things. So also, uh, also an area that everyone should be getting involved in and not just relying on that one team. So if any of you are well experienced in, in a source, you will have seen diagrams like this before. Um, I've kind of taken um, taken the diagrams that I've seen before from from other inner source talks uh, and added kind of the terminology that we're using at work. So um, the owners are making changes to the code base, but they're also reviewing contributions from uh, from your kind of stakeholders or, or your dependents. Um, and those stakeholders are feeding requirements into the owning team and affecting their roadmap but they're not just throwing it over the wall in that kind of um, you know, poor collaboration, siloed, non inner source way of doing things. They are making contributions as well at the same time. And in the title of my talk, I talked about uh, DevOps. Um, and this is important because when we talk about ownership, it's not just the code, you know, maintaining it um, and the technical direction, um, you also own the release and the monitoring and the operation of your code in production. Um, so the build and launch team are kind of a DevOps team, if, if people are familiar with that concept, but all of the teams practice DevOps in terms of how they look after their areas of ownership. So given all that, the, the ownership principles that we've uh, come out with um, as we've been you know, working on ownership over the years. Um, so yeah, like I said about DevOps, owners are responsible for the whole life cycle, development, testing, maintenance, deployment, and operation. They're grouped into teams by specialty, product functionality, and team mission. Uh, so the team mission one's really important because um, we don't want teams to have things thrusted upon them that they are then responsible for that doesn't fit in with their mission because they'll own it on paper but they won't actually maintain it uh, they won't actually understand what they what they supposedly own um so for example you know the build and launch team shouldn't have all of the aws things getting dumped on them um, it should just be the things that are pertinent to building and launching the tv applications uh, defined in terms of teams, not individuals. So, if an individual owns something, it's not really owned. You can't you can't rely on that one person to be available out of hours uh, or even in hours if there's a live incident. Um, and it's also not really fair to expect one person to be you know, a single point of failure for for a critical piece of uh, of software. Uh, and finally, supporting the source contributions. So this is where I was talking about ownership as an enabler for inner source because we expect owners of the different areas to be maintaining the documentation mentoring con contributors helping them unblock themselves as they're looking to contribute into into the in, into the person area um and um wanted to call out that codifying this is really important like it needs to be obvious who owns what uh, and github um, code owners is a really good way of doing this because when you see pull requests coming in the owning team gets a notification that the pull request has been opened uh, and it's also really obvious who the contributor needs to reach out to so one way that we've started looking at ownership is this this idea of hard ownership and soft ownership so i talked at the start a little bit about good and bad ownership or like toxic and non-toxic ownership um and also when i was talking about uh you know teams being given things that they don't really understand aren't really maintaining you might think of that as weak versus strong ownership um but 
for understanding ownership models and where you might want to apply different ownership models for different situations hard versus soft is um is a, a way we've been looking at things recently so on the extreme left the hard ownership that's the kind of non inner source like almost traditional throwing requirements over the wall and hoping that um hoping that the team responsible builds it um now might sound weird coming from someone like me who's an inner source advocate but on on occasion this is appropriate um if you have something that needs really really deep domain knowledge so i talked about like media playback um the sum of that area uh, you really need to understand tv playback inside and out now that team should still be inner sourcing as much as possible but there are certain areas where actually you need hard ownership because you need the domain expertise and then on the other other extreme the soft ownership is kind of free for all people can just commit um anyone can commit and um obviously that's very flexible and it means people are kind of empowered to to do what they need to do to deliver their tickets or their product features but then for the the maintenance pieces the technical debt um like who's going to pick that up if it's not if it's not clear who's responsible um so we found that there's kind of a happy medium to be had here which is i'd say kind of the traditional inner source model um so i'm going to talk about some of those kind of um so some of the models that we've been trying out um and it's worth thinking about roles and responsibilities so again, uh, for those of you who have been involved in a source in a while or open source, you might be familiar with the concept of maintainers, trusted committers and contributors. So maintainers, kind of the owners in, in our terminology, um, they're essentially responsible for the project. Um, they are working directly on it, but they're also enabling other people to work on it. The trusted committers are kind of what it says on the tin, they're trusted to commit to the code base, um, but they aren't necessarily leading the technical direction. Um, they aren't necessarily responsible for um, maintaining it in live production or making sure that the software is up to date and secure and compliant, um, but they are empowered to commit themselves and unblock themselves. And then contributors, yeah, um, so they can't autonomously change the code, but they can raise a pull request and then a trusted committer or a maintainer um, can help them with that if necessary and code review it and approve it. So the model we've got, as I described, is that because we have a, an entire team maintaining something, we don't have any trusted committers outside of the owning team. So that's not ideal. That's not um fully mature inner source really um so this is something we need to work on um it does mean that at least there's clear accountability and the software is well maintained by the owners but it does mean that the the other people that want to be working on the code the contributors don't have that step up to autonomously work on the code as trusted committers so hopefully one day we can get to more of a model where there are trusted committers in the different teams and there's not that code review bottleneck in the owning team. So one of the things we are just starting to try is more of a distributed ownership model. Um, so I was talking about app core before. Now we're going to try this with some of the app core areas because as I say, like all of the product teams need to care about app core. Um, it's part of all of their kind of missions, really. So um, yeah, we want to distribute the maintainers. We want to have at least one maintainer in every team that works on app core. Um, and we want trusted committers as well to support them. So, you know, we can't have one maintainer in each team because that would still be a bottleneck. So this should empower teams to work on app core and take the burden off the app core team who, um, as I say, potentially don't understand it it's not part of their work on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, it's just not really a suitable ownership model, dumping all of the app core into one team. I um, just want to shout out um, Daniel, our Inner Source Commons president, um, 
because uh, he came and visited the BBC when he happened to be over in the UK. Um, and one of the really interesting stories he was telling us was about uh, one of Biturge's clients um, who implemented this kind of distributed ownership model. And that was actually across country boundaries as well, not just team boundaries. So that was a big kind of inspiration to, to apply this model. So yeah, always great to learn from other people in the industry. So to summarize, hard ownership, like it does foster expertise. It does mean things are well operationally supported. And um, because it's team-based, you get the cross-discipline support of like, product and delivery and things like that. But it doesn't scale, the team's a bottleneck and it has that silo effect. Where a soft ownership is gonna be really flexible, it will scale to however many developers you've got, but you get that somebody else's problem thing no one's necessarily going to be doing the tech debt, doing the security maintenance, the patching, the taking latest dependencies, all the operational support. Uh, and it can slow down decision making as well when it's just a, a nebulous group that's looking after something. So things you might want to watch out for, like avoid catch all ownership areas. Avoid on paper ownership. If a team owns something, they need to understand it and maintain it. And that's really bad for inner source as well, because if you're trying to contribute to a code base that's only owned on paper, you're not going to get support to get that merged in. Watch out for uneven distribution across teams. Conway's law, I don't have time to go loads into Conway's law, but essentially your team structure will affect your code architecture, but also you should think about your code architecture when you're looking at your team structure. Fuzzy boundaries are challenging. Um, I've not really talked about that, but that's something to bear in mind. Um, and yeah, don't misalign ownership with the team mission. So thank you very much.